Hello everybody, so today I'm going to explain to you the logic and the methods behind procedural walking. So first, wait, let me just open Flinter to show you something. So first thing that we need to know is, is the rig for my mesh. Yeah, just wait for it to open. Yeah, so this is my rig. As you can see here, we have um, two bones for each limb, the thigh and the calf and the third bone which is going to be the foot or uh, the uh, foot bone is, a, is actually an IK bone or an effector bone it's not connected to the uh, rest of the legs uh, uh, bones so yeah so these are not actually um weight like weight painted on the mesh or anything just like this controls the IK for the legs okay so just go here so first thing that we need to do is we need to create an animation blueprint then since I have the third person uh, star star project we're going to just duplicate this uh, pp underscore robot dog then I'm going to just change its location and now wait a minute okay now we're going to the viewport changing the mesh into the uh, robot dog and the animation class into the robot dog skeleton animation blueprint nice now we're just going to drag this okay, it's lagging a bit okay so what we're going to do is uh wait let me show you the logic behind the uh, behind what i'm going to do so first thing we have uh, this we have uh, four legs uh, two for each side now in my method in my method i don't want to use individual uh, uh individual references for each leg so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make an array that stores the raycast position of the leg. I hope I explained it correctly. Once you see the actual the uh, the way it works, it's going to be a lot more simpler. So first here we're going to make a scene component. It's going to be the front legs and another one for the back legs and, uh, okay. so now for the front legs we're going to add two more scene components front right and front left now to see where the uh, where the uh, scene components are located we're going to just add a sphere uh, just for uh, debugging reasons and it's going to be like 0 0.1 0 0.2 yes 0 0.2 copy paste here nice now we're going to change the perspective to uh, align the scene components so for the front right it's going to be wait a minute you just add the grid buttons just it's going to be here for the front leg same thing it's going to be here now let's just change the uh, perspective again and just drag them above like this now you can copy this and add it to the uh, black legs like this but let's just change their names back left and back right copy paste here add the spheres paste. now just change wait a minute ok now we're going to do the same thing but for the back legs back left it's going to be here 
back right it's going to be here okay save we just uh, check to see if everything is correctly set up and it is now we're going to the animation blueprint so what we're going to do first is we need to actually ground the legs to, to actually lock lock the legs onto the ground so whenever we move the uh, mesh the legs will stay in the same direction in the same location i mean so, uh, and we will uh, use the uh, pre uh, the scene components we previously set up so let's go to the event graph uh cast to bp robot dog promote to a variable and we're going to just copy this and just use the event begin play now why did i do this because um whenever i try to uh use the do once node with this it, it won't work i don't really know why i mean the logic itself itself is correct with the do one node anyways so f for the functions we're going to make a new function which is going, which is going to be the world locked feet location and then we're going to make an uh, array which is going to be the world locked feet or wait grounded feet location like this going to be a vector array so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the bb dog going to use an is valid node so there won't be an, any issues with the validation and if it is valid um first we will get the grounded feet location we're going to clear it then uh, we will oh, I don't think we need that anyways we will uh, use a for each loop we'll use a for each loop we'll get this get the child wait um, get front legs then we will get children components and we're just going to uh, connect it yeah the debugging is really annoying in uh, version 5.1 really annoying um so we're going to do a raycast line trace i mean yes and we will get first we're going to get the world location then we're going to get the world or the up vector the world location is going to be here up vector is going to going to multiply it by a float I'm going to just um, convert to float promote to a variable it's going to be trace distance then we're going to add it to the original world uh, location uh. anyways I'm going to add it to the world location just so it moves so the uh, the line trace actually moves with the uh, or like traces from the world location so whenever if like i moved it uh it's going to trace from the same location anyway so let's see if it's working it should work so let's just uh, simulate hmm Ah uh, yes, uh, I forgot to actually um, use the trace distance. Just make it minus two hundred or three hundred. Anyways, is it working? It is not. Minus five hundred maybe. Ah uh, yes, I forgot to actually call the function. Uh, oh. Combine. Let's just see. Okay, it's working now we're going to use the location for the uh, for the line trace uh, we're going to use the line trace hit location to um uh, and like add it to the ground feet location array so first we're going to use a branch 
Then uh, we're going to break this. Then from the location, we're going to add it. Add it. Make sure it's an array. To the ground feet location. So now if I uh, use a print string. Print string. I should see. should see some values some vector values and as you can see we can see it in fact whenever I play yes so let's just delete this now we're going to go to the animation graph add a two bone IK since uh, I use two bones for the legs uh, if your setup have uh, more than two bones for each leg um, I think you can try to use uh, virtual bones Like manipulate the virtual bones then uh, just try to uh, get the Just try to manipulate the virtual bones and uh, Use and like Interpolate the IK location to the virtual bone location um, I did a similar thing with a project a procedural recoil a while back you can check out how it works so we're going to get the ground feed I'm going to use get now wait let me just look at something so here the first one is the front right so this is going to be zero and this is going to be one so let's just put this here ik bone front right component no world space since we get the wall since uh, the line trace or the ray cast is uh, is in the world space world location space and the joint target is going to be unexposed and uh, and the joint is going to be this 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 right here uh, since if it was uh, a traditional spider we could have used the Z axis to make the joints uh, look upwards, but since it's like it got this humanoid look to it, like a uh, traditional mammal, we're going to use the Y axis and just apply a big number for it. Everything is set up correctly. It's C now. Oh. So it's actually one, not zero. As you can see, the foot is grounded. Now we're just going to copy this foot left. Just add it like this. So wait, add it like this and zero. You could, if you want to, um, make. You could, if you want to, um, make all of these, uh, like not to separate the back legs from the front legs. But uh, in my method, this won't work really well with the alternating feet logic so I like to just use the front legs I like to separate the front legs from the back legs so yeah now what we need is the target feet location so to do that we're going to just war, uh, make a new function war target feet location and uh, we're going to just copy this and just add it here and then so we're, go we're going to copy this and uh, just change its name and it's going to be one frame and the trace color is going to be blue yeah 
just making sure that everything set up correctly then we're going to the event graph and we're just going to add it to the event tick just now see if it's working it is working so now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the distance between the grounded foot location is uh, the distance between grounded foot location and the target foot location is greater than something like 15 units 60 uh, 20 units something like that then we're going to interpolate between the old foot location to the new foot location so what we're going to do is uh, i'm just going to show you how it would uh, i'm just going to show you a simplified version of what i'm going to do so if you're going to go here check the distance and we're just going to get this and get this oh wait a minute i forgot to do something uh so here so here yes wait we just do this so here we're going to make a variable it's going to be the feet index is going to be an integer but it's not going to be a uh, it's going to be a single variable not an array <coughs> it's going to be minus one from minus one to one and we're just going to increment the variable with each loop Just going to copy this and uh, add it to the locked feet location. So now, if we go to the check distance, we're going to use the get fun get i copy. Same thing here. We're going to use the feet index. then we're going to uh, get the difference between them so we're going to subtract them then we're going to get the vector length so the vector length actually just gives the any difference between them from the x y or z axis and just like make it a float I'm going to use greater than 15 and if it's greater than 15 we're going to um, interpolate so with the interpolation method I figure something out so as you can see wait let me just use a print string to show you what I'm going what I'm talking about So here, now, so whenever, so wait, let's just so look, as you can see, it's the difference between them is 20. So whenever the difference is less than 15, it stops interpolating, it stops. Like if it's like this, and we want to interpolate between this, between these two points, but mid interpolation the distance between them is now less than 15 units it's going to stop midway so now let me just show you how it would look like um wait i'm going to use this uh v inter 2 current and the target is this delta time is world delta second Terp speed is going to be 15 something, something like that now set element set array element going to just well uh, so what, what what this is going to do is it's going to override the uh, the wait it's going to override the uh, the uh, what's called the uh, array elements 
with, with the given index and if you use a size to fit it's going to add more elements to the array so it's not it's not what we need we need to override it so now the distance between them is greater than 15 look it stops midway and if it's like one to actually see the foot traveling as you can see it stops work it stops uh, halfway it just keeps stopping once the distance between them is less than 15 it stops but we have an issue here which is why why is the feet index always at 1 yes see if I did something wrong nothing wrong really nothing wrong hmm. wait we just get the uh, an output really weird to be honest hmm. wait let me just use zero for the interpolation hmm. why does that happen as expected but I mean it, it won't really do anything because we won't be we won't be using this we're going to actually use uh, a we're going to manually interpolate them so first thing that I'm going to use I'm going to the uh, robot dog because with my method uh, I actually need uh, a movement input it won't be like one of those uh, animation one of those Wait, so wait, so my method actually works with uh, with the with the like a actor like that's not a character, not a character a character or player actor. But only problem is with the alternating feet. This is the only problem. So if you have if you want to, you can interpolate uh, all feet together. But if you want to have uh, like some sort of walking cycle, the alternating feed method, um, it's really just uh, the logic behind the alternating feed method only. It's really the thing that is actually messing up the entire process right now. So let's start working on the interpolation method. So first, I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the distance between them. I'm going to make a variable is going to be the feed index again integer then we're going to cast it cast to um, robot dog skeleton blueprint uh, uh, skeleton animation blueprint uh, what we need is we need to get these uh, variables this and this for it to work so I'm going to get the mesh I'm going to get an instance then I'm going to just connect them promote to a variable connect it add it here then here 
what we're going to do is um, going to check for the distance to get well, grounded feet location get a target feet location we're going to now get a copy going to subtract them going to use the vector links going to make sure if it's greater than or equal something like that going to connect them then if it's true if it's true we're going to make two new variables interp time and interp duration they're going to be floats so if it's true the duration time is going to be wait let's what's the event tick we don't have and it's event tick going to promote this to a variable then we're going to get the delta second plus the interpolation time and if this is greater than the interpolation duration we're going to set it to zero and if this is false here we're going to also set it to zero Uh, you won't need to do this if you figured out how to fix the issue with the feet stopping halfway when interpolating but since uh, I found this to be a really good method first to learn how to use um, to learn how to manually interpolate second because it's uh, like um, move or like move around the issue with the v interp2 problem which the which is when the feet uh, stops uh, interpolating midway and if it's false we're going to wait yeah if we finished now we're going to use okay, now we're going to interpolate like the real interpolation index is going to be the feet index item is still not here yet so first what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and uh, copy this then we're going to get these wait tabulation time tabulation duration then we're going to divide them then we um, divide them so wait yeah Fair, we're going to multiply them so this is the interpolation and this is getting the direction to interpolate to so it's, it's going to be the direction and this we're just going to multiply them to convey to a float then we're going to add them to this Um, then we're going to break now what we're going to do is we're going to do the step height cycle so first we head out and go and get a curve it's going to be a, a float curve select um, step height curve we're going to add uh, three keys 
going to be at 1 it's going to be at 0 and this is going to be between them 0.5 and this is going to actually be the and this is going to be 1 so this is the step height cycle so 0 1 0 if you want to have a nice smooth feeling to it you can uh, use the user and use the uh, user or the cubic uh, interpolation to like have this have this uh, nice feeling to it but since I want to have like a more robotic feeling I don't want to use this now what we what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable it's going to be the step height curve and it's going to be curve load this compile use it and we're just going to get float float value and we're going to uh, multiply it by the step height float and it's going to be something like 15 since we use here one we can freely manipulate manipulate it inside the editor free source control going to add it then we're going to make vector and we're just going to put it here this should work this this crossing of the legs um, happens it's, it's like an error in the engine actually if we uh, remove a variable and add it again it won't happen yeah wait let me do this instead ah yes I forgot the entire duration must be one must be at all times and Why does that happen? Yes, uh, it's going to only happen to the left foot, not the right foot, so... Oh. Why is that? How much did I set this by? 15, I mean, it's a good number. try something again oh, it's true why is it true huh? yeah this is kind of weird to be honest why is it true? Why is it not interpolating to the new new uh, foot location? Oh, 
Okay, it's working. <laughs> and this is kind of weird. We can uh, use for each loop if you want to. Each loop. No, I mean for loop. I mean for loop. And first index going to be zero. Last one is going to be one index here. Or instead of doing this, we're just going to get the feet index. Append it. Then just look at both of the feet moving. <coughs> yeah, this is kind of funny. Now we need to alternate between them so now it's working and everything but ju we just need to alternate between them now we ju we're just going to delete this and add the alternating method so we're going to make a macro it's going to make it's going to be called alternate feet or foot or whatever and now we just need to manipulate this set So let's see. So since um, so we have a problem here. If you use a flip flop, if you use a flip flop, it's going to spam the flip flop, and it would look like really janky and stuttery and whatever. So we need to use a do once node do once. And we're just, we're just going to make a check here We're going to go here and just collapse this to a macro Should move And we're just going to promote this to a variable Then we're going to add the alternate feet, and if it's true, we're going to do another check inside of it. And if, it, if this is true, we're going to make a sequence, and we're going to go here. This is going to go here. Um, hmm. we're going to do a flip flop here. And we're just going to add the feet index. It's going to start at at one, and the b is going to be zero. And to reset, it's going to be false. Hmm. What is the value? Ah, oh, yes. Really weird to be honest. Really weird. Maybe it's because this. Let's just add the sequence. <laughs> it's working. But it's really weird. Wait, let's do something. Why 
Why is it really weird? This should not really happen. Um, why does it happen? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure why it's happening. If it was, we we're going to reset it. Right, let's add it into the event tick. See if it's going to change anything. Uh, this is why I did not use event tick for uh, my method. The event tick is go we're going to use the event tick for the interpolation. So just going to get this add it here condition yes fits false here so we're just going to delete this because we do not need them kind of works but like the uh, the alternating feet messes with or not wait let me just look at what happens really ah the speed is too much for the uh, for it to keep up we can uh, get the check just lower it I guess Increase it, maybe. Or we can just decrease the speed. Okay, now if you want to, um, uh, don't uh, if if you uh, if you want to like do the back legs, you can just you know add sequence here, do the for loop again, or add the sequence, do the for loop, and like do everything again if you want to. But this time for the back feet and now to you see so first so to rotate the mesh with the ground since you have four legs so first uh, if you want to rotate the uh, weight the the y axis to rotate like to rotate it to uh, like this like uh, from from here to here um you need to get the average so you need to get the average height of each uh, of the uh, average height of the uh, right legs then we're going to subtract them from the average height of the leg left legs so it's going to be something like uh, like if r and yeah, for z axis and back right z axis add them then from this like and since we need the average uh, the uh, the output of this like it's for example v200 I'm going to subtract them by 2 to get the average then we, we are going to uh, subtract them subtract them or like yeah subtract them minus them from the average of the uh, left legs z z add equal 200 
uh, or like or like something like um, 50 over 2 equal 25 subtract them then we're going to add then once we subtract them we will get the uh, output and just promote it to a variable and this is the rotation offset now for the uh, like the slope like uh, rotating the legs uh, the body up up and down like wait let me just go to here so the previous one the previous one was for to rotate it in the y axis but now to rotate it on the x axis like this we will need to get it's like the same logic except you will need to get the average of the average of uh, of the front legs subtract them average of the front legs subtract them from the average of the right, uh, uh, back legs and then promote it to a variable and just like go here go here and use transport transform modify bone and just uh, transform modify bone and just uh, uh, just connect these wait let me show you transform modify bone here we can like bone to modify your root or pelvis and uh, the rotation we just need the rotation is going to split it and just going to unexpose it. now for the y you can use the rotation offset as i said earlier for the x you can use the mesh offset as i said earlier really simple methods i mean and if you are like um if you're like really confused on how you can do them um you could try to see how you can get the slope of uh, graphs of graphs in like real life like you get this this point and this point and just like you know get the difference between them y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 really that simple except we won't be dividing them we're just going to be subtracting them okay so this was my method for uh, wo procedure walking i'm really a terrible teacher but uh, i hope you understood something or like the way the method works so in the future you can do something uh, on your own something better i hope anyways uh see you in the next video